So PS5 Pro has finally been announced and the price point on it has a lot of people talking. It is going to be 700 US dollars, a price point that even exceeds the PS3's notorious 599 US dollars. This thing is going to be pretty expensive and it also is not going to feature a disk drive. You will be able to take the disk drive from your current PS5 and be able to use it on this machine. So in that sense, it's not like you can't use your disk on the PS5 Pro. But there's not going to be a SKU that you can buy straight out of the gate that is going to allow you to use your disc on PS5 Pro. Meaning that if you have a launch PS5, you're going to need to buy um, that disc drive as well. And once you get taxes that are included in there, you're probably looking at around $800 for the PS5 Pro. That's a pretty substantial price point for this upgrade. This is not going to be cheap at all. And I know we don't expect these Pro units to necessarily be cheap, uh, but we do expect them to be somewhat reasonable in price. And of course, a Pro version of a console is expected to be a little bit more pricey than the base unit, right? You are paying for that ultimate gaming experience. It, it's specifically for the customer who has the money and wants a gaming experience to be the best possible thing that it can be. And that's understandable. Uh, but $700 does have a few people like, I don't know about that, man. You know, consoles are a cheaper place to play than PCs, of course. Like that's like the whole selling point is that you can get this 4K high-end gaming without necessarily having to pay the same price that I'd have to pay for a brand new GPU. However, for $700, if you have an existing rig, you could probably put a pretty decent GPU in there for that price. You can get a 4070 Ti Super and you'd be playing all these games at the 4K60 that this machine is supposed to promise you and you'd probably get more bang for your buck. Not to mention that a lot of people just don't have the TV necessary in order to really take advantage of this like a lot of you are still rocking 1080p tvs if you have a three or four hundred dollar television that you got from like walmart i don't think you need to buy this machine i think it is going to be way overpriced for you i don't think it's really going to provide the value you do need a really good monitor a really good screen for this ps5 pro to truly give you the visual fidelity that you're looking for and a lot of you would probably benefit more for putting that 700 dollars on a better tv screen that can really get you you know maximize your current ps5's visuals like if you don't have like an oled screen for example i would say go and buy an oled TV and you'll get more of a visual upgrade from doing that with your base PS5 than you will from getting the PS5 Pro. And then for Final Fantasy 7 fans, Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth is going to be getting an enhanced version for the PS5 Pro. So this is going to be really awesome because as you guys probably know with Final Fantasy 7 Rebirth, very gorgeous game. However, whenever you play that game on performance mode, it is incredibly blurry. The graphics are really good when you play on graphics mode, but man, on performance mode, it is just incredibly rough. It looks like there is a layer of Vaseline rubbed on top of the game. It is not the best look. I've been wanting to replay this game, but I, man, the next time I replay it, I want to play it at full visual fidelity and not um, having to choose between two vital components and that being my ability to physically see the game and um, 60 frames per second. And so uh, I believe the PS5 Pro enhanced version of Rebirth is going to really address that. And I mean, we've already seen with Integrate, for example, that jump between PS4 Pro version of the game and then the PS5 version was already really good. And so um, I can only imagine that Rebirth is going to look and play excellent on PS5 Pro. But that being said, I mean, there's definitely going to be a lot of people who still just want a PC version of this and uh, would be able to get all the features that they're looking for from that. And so I don't know that even for the most hardcore, most dedicated Final Fantasy VII fans, whether they're going to want to hop in with this or not. I, I suppose that if you're just really dedicated to playing Rebirth at the highest fidelity possible, you can hop in here. But a lot of people are still going to hold out hope that a PC version could come soon and they would be able to play that, you know, not only with the 60 frames per second at the graphics mode, uh, but they'd also be able to play it in ultra wide with the full fidelity. One of the games that was notably absent from the list of PS5 Pro compatible games was Final Fantasy 16. Now FF16 also has a PC version coming soon and you'll be able to buy that if you want like the full fidelity if you want like the they have an ultra wide mod already in the demo that you can use. If you want to play FF16 
with 60 frames per second at a very high resolution. You can already do that through the PC version. They haven't officially announced a PS5 Pro version, but I'm willing to bet that that is coming by default. Now, in terms of who is ready and sold on the PS5 Pro, uh, I went ahead and just made a Twitter poll just to see what my audience felt about it. Now, bear in mind, Twitter polls are not, you know, scientifically accurate polling and should never ever be treated as such. However, I do think that this kind of paints a picture of of the reality of how people felt about the PS5 Pro reveal. Only 8.9% of people so far out of 1,016 votes, thats it's only been like two hours that the poll has been up, have said that they're sold on the PS5 Pro. And 77.5% saying that they're not sold on it, 11.2% saying that they need more information, and 2.5% saying other. As we go through some of the comments here, my boy Bear Boy is saying, I didn't already own a PS5, that I'm barely playing PS5 games on, I would be inclined to pick up a Pro. More power and two terabyte storage is great, but for $700 with no disk drive is crazy. I don't give a damn what enhancements 7R2 or 3 will support, and that's a fair point. Rin here saying, not really, but I'll get it anyway. I'm sure there'll be quite a few people that will do that too, because as we all know, there's people that love to complain, but they'll still buy and consume anyway. Buster Sword user here is saying, I think it sold me on upgrading my PC, again, um, you know, if you already have a PC, you already have a rig, you know, for the price of the PS5 Pro, you can get a really good GPU that is absolutely going to outperform the PS5 Pro. So that is definitely something that people who already own a computer, and again, not a new computer either. If you have a computer within, you know, the recent decade that doesn't have any bottlenecks that'll happen. And I mean like severe bottlenecks enough to actually cripple performance, but like generally speaking, other than that, you're probably good. And my boy Limitless here saying, not in this economy, I'm looking forward to seeing more on it, but that pricing is absolutely insane. Now it's time for the Nintendo Switch 2. And then I'm also sure that the Nintendo Switch 2 is probably gonna cost around $400 max, right? That might be a better value proposition for a lot of people that are looking to play games more than anything. And again, I think one of the big sticking points for a lot of people is going to be a lack of disk drive. Now, as I mentioned on my stream, for me personally, this isn't like the hugest deal breaker because I get most of my games digitally. A lot of the times uh, I get my review codes from companies and such. And so as a result, it's made me have a habit of owning games digitally. However, everyone is not me. Everyone's not a content creator. There are still plenty of people who love to own games physically. The issue that I see personally with the fact that the PS5 Pro doesn't come with a SKU where the disk drive is included is the fact that, you know, if you own all these disk-based games, you won't be able to just hop straight into PS5 Pro. You'll also have to buy the disk drive attachment to go along with it. And we also see Microsoft, for example, phasing out physical games. And so it does look to me that Sony is trying their best to kind of wean people off of physical disk-based games. And this is the way that they're doing it. They're not having a PS5 Pro SKU with the disk drive. They're putting all these kind of obstacles in the way for you to get the disk drive. And it seems to me, this is kind of a transitional phase for them to slowly get rid of discs altogether. And I know for a lot of you physical media heads, you are going to absolutely detest that. And it's really hard for me to read it any other way, but honestly, that's what I'm seeing here. I'm seeing that they are wanting to move away from physical media. And so they're going to put all of these kind of hoops in the way so that you know, it kind of de-incentivizes you from wanting to buy that disk drive, especially when the disk drive is $80, right? So this is a $700 console, and then they want you to spend $80 on top of that. So, I mean, if you're a disk-based user and you don't really own digital games like that and you're purely physical and you wanna to upgrade to PS5 Pro, then you're gonna spend almost $800 and that's before tax. That is a lot of money to ask in this economy and I just don't think that a lot of people are going to budge for it. People are not as enthused by it after its announcement compared to before. Before the announcement, I felt a lot of energy coming from people about it, but now I'm just really feeling the skepticism and a lot of people are just not too happy about this thing. But please, let me know your thoughts in the comments below and if you'll be purchasing a PS5 Pro. And I'll see you all in the next video. Later, guys.